Any ads heard during this episode that are not in our voice are placed by third-party agencies. They should not be considered the opinion of or to be endorsed by Hoosier Myths and Legends. Welcome to another episode of the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. I'm Rebecca Wilhelm. I'm Mary Quigley. And I'm Hope Wilhelm. Join us as we dive into the spookier side of the Hoosier State. So what comes to your mind when you think of Indiana? Do you think of corn? Do you think of basketball? Do you think of the Indianapolis 500? Maybe you think of famous celebrities who were born in Indiana, like John Mellencamp or Michael Jackson. But as the saying goes, there is more than corn in Indiana. 92 counties make up the Hoosier State. In this podcast, we are going to discuss some Indiana folklore from each of these counties. If you are into tall tales, ghosts, or spooky legends, then this is a podcast you are not going to want to miss. The episode we have for you today is not specific to one Indiana county. Instead, we bring you several legends about haunted or otherwise known as crybaby bridges in Indiana. So crybaby bridge is a term used to describe several bridges across the United States that are steeped in urban legends and ghost stories, particularly involving the eerie sounds of a baby crying. These stories often feature tragic backstories, such as infanticide, accidents, or other sorrowful events that are said to have taken place at or near bridges. For instance, one common legend about the Avon Bridge tells of a mother whose foot got trapped in the railroad tracks when a large locomotive was quickly approaching. She was able to free her foot and then, clutching her baby, she jumps from the bridge. She survived the fall, but her baby did not. Legend tells that to this day, you can hear the woman's cries as she searches for her baby. This phenomena is not confined to a single location, but reflects a type of folklore deeply woven into the cultural fabric of various regions, each adapting the legend to their own local history or landscape. So turn the lights down, get comfortable, and relax as we bring you several tales of Hoosier crybaby bridges. back to our show. I have always been a little freaked out about bridge legends. In fact, if you have been listening to us from the beginning, we did an episode about haunted bridges back in season two, episode one. We actually discussed the Avon Bridge in that episode. And I have also always been a little bit intrigued with bridge legends, Mary. The first bridge legend that I learned about and that really got me hooked on these stories was the Wabash Cannonball Bridge outside of Vincennes, Indiana. Yes, the Purplehead Bridge. We covered that legend in Season 1, Episode 6. And Indiana is actually home to several haunted or crybaby bridges. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the first bridge legend that we talk about today is a legend that I've always been intrigued by, but I have to admit, I'm too afraid to go out and investigate this one myself. And that's the Hell's Gate in Diamond, Indiana. It's a spot that's become infamous among paranormal enthusiasts and locals alike. This legend is also part of something that is often referred to as the Seven Gates of Hell, located in the Wabash Valley. Yeah, Hell's Gate is one of those locations that just gives you the creeps by its name alone. Absolutely. Hell's Gate is actually a nickname given to a small area near the town of Diamond, Indiana, which is not far from Terre Haute. And it's also not too far from Spooklight Hill, which we talked about in Season 2, Episode 2. The site itself is unremarkable at first glance, a train trestle that crosses over a road. 
but the stories surrounding it are anything but ordinary. That's right. So the legend goes that if you pass under this trestle at night, particularly at midnight, you might see the gates of hell themselves opening before you. And some say you'll encounter the ghost of those who died on the tracks in a past train derailment, while others claim you can hear the screams of the damned. The most famous part of the legend, though, involves the idea that the trestle is a portal to another dimension, or perhaps the afterlife. People have reported seeing strange lights, hearing disembodied voices, and even feeling an overwhelming sense of dread as they approach the site. One legend involves the graffiti on the walls of the bridge. Apparently, this graffiti will start to glow and blood will run down the walls of the bridge. If your name appears on the wall, then you will begin to hear banging on your car roof and windows. After that's over, start your car and leave. Yeah, seeing your name on the wall means you're supposed to die. On your way out of the area, you will also see two ghost children hanging. And you know what? That's just a note from this chair on going out to this location. I agree with you. The next tale we have for you is about the Edna Collins Bridge in Greencastle, Indiana. This legend has captivated locals for decades and continues to draw visitors looking for a brush with the supernatural. The Edna Collins Bridge is a picturesque covered bridge in the rural countryside of Putnam County, but don't let its charming appearance fool you. This bridge is said to be one of the most haunted places in Indiana with a tragic story behind it. The bridge itself was built in 1922, and like many covered bridges, it has that classic, almost romantic look. But the legend associated with it is far from romantic. It centers around a little girl named Edna Collins, who, according to the story, used to visit the nearby creek with her dog in the early 1920s. Legend says that Edna's parents would drop her off at the bridge while they ran errands. Edna loved to swim in the creek, and when it was time for Edna to be picked up, her parents would signal by honking the car horn three times. One day, though, something went terribly wrong. Her parents returned to find the creek eerily quiet. Despite honking the horn, Edna didn't come running as she usually did. They searched for her frantically, but she was nowhere to be found. And we will be back after a short break with more about this tale. Are you an Indiana small business owner looking to reach a wider audience? Consider partnering with the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast directly to advertise your business. Our listeners are passionate, engaged, and love supporting local businesses just like yours. By advertising with us, you'll connect directly with a community that values what Indiana has to offer. Promote your business with the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast and watch your customer base grow. Ready to make your mark? Contact us today at Legends at gmail.com and let's bring your business to the forefront. We are back with more about the Edna Collins Bridge. So after Edna did not come when her parents honked the car for her, Tragically, they eventually discovered Edna's body in the creek. And the details of how she died, they vary depending on who you ask. Some say she drowned accidentally. Others may believe that she may have been the victim of foul play. But regardless of the specifics, the story ends in tragedy. The grief-stricken parents are said to have never fully recovered from the loss. And that's where the haunting begins. It's said that if you drive onto the bridge, stop in the middle, and honk your horn three times, just like Edna's parents used to do, you might get a response. Some claim to hear the sound of a child's voice or see the ghostly figure of a little girl, often accompanied by a feeling of intense sadness or coldness. Now, there are different variations of this story out there. One legend that we saw on the Go Putnam County website has her mother following her in death. Now, on that website, it's claimed that there is a legend out there that Edna's mother hung herself on the bridge after her daughter's death. The Go Putnam County website also mentions a legend saying that the bridge was built by Edna's father in her memory. Interesting. The last legend we have for you is about the Crybaby Bridge in Morgan County near Martinsville. Now, this is a legend that we found on the Indiana State University Folklore Archives website. According to this legend, a woman's baby drowned while she was crossing the bridge. Now, if you visit the bridge, you can hear the baby crying and see her looking for the baby. 
Now, this legend we found on the Indiana State Folklore Archives is from September the 18th, 1973. The legend was told by Denise Rutledge, who was an ISU student at the time. We'll be back to read Denise's account of the legend after a short break. Our podcast is growing, and it's so exciting to see all of our new followers on social media and all of the many downloads of our podcast. Most of our listeners come from my heart radio. However, we are on all the major podcast platforms. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to give us a five-star rating on whatever podcast platform you are listening to us through. Your comments and likes help others find us. Thank you for tuning in to the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. Now back to our show. We are back with Denise's account of the legend of the crybaby bridge at Martinsville. And we're going to just read directly from the archives her account of this legend. About two miles from my house on a back road, there's a big cement bridge going over a creek. It's got three big arches on the bottom. Then you can go upstairs on the side and go to the top of the bridge. And off to the side, there's a little white wooden shanty sitting back off the road in the woods. Anyway, this bridge is haunted. They say that in the Civil War, this woman was married to a rebel soldier. His family lived in or around Plainfield, and she got pregnant, was going to have a baby, and she went up to live with her husband's mother. His mother had always resented that her son had married a Southerner. The mother-in-law just sort of, well, she just gradually went insane, acting strange, and tried to take over caring for the baby. She started mistreating the girl, then mistreating the baby, and the girl wanted to get away. And the mother-in-law seemed to be guarding the girl, keeping her close to the house and not letting her talk to anyone. And the girl was really scared. So one night, she decided she just had to get away. And in the back of the house, there's the dense woods. So she couldn't go that way. The only thing she could do is go across the creek. So she got up one night. She was wearing a long white robe and everything, and she wrapped the baby up in blankets and she took off. And it had rained a lot, and the creek was high. So she figured all she could do is go up the steps and across the bridge. She went up the steps and she was so worried about being found out or followed what she would do when she did get over the bridge. And she didn't think. And she went all the way up to the top where the railroad tracks are. And started to walk along the railroad tracks and her foot got stuck and a train came. She tried to pull her foot out and she lost balance and dropped the baby. And the baby cried. She made it. And she jumped down and hung on the edge of the tracks and crawled in one of the lower arches. But it's said now that sometimes in the night, when it's real still, if you go out to the haunted bridge, you can hear a baby cry. And you can see the woman in white at the top looking over the edge calling for her baby. Now, listeners, it's important to keep in mind that while these legends are intriguing, there's also a safety aspect to consider. Many of these train trestles are still active railroad tracks. Trespassing can be dangerous. So for all of our listeners out there, if you're thinking of checking out any of the bridges that we've discussed in this episode, do so with caution and please respect the area. Have you ever had an experience at one of the locations we mentioned today? Are you familiar with the seven gates of hell in the Wabash Valley? We would love to hear about it. Please send us an email to Legends at gmail.com or reach out to us on social media. We may use it in a later episode. In the email, let us know if you wish to remain anonymous.
To see our source material, please visit our website, HoosierMissingLegends.com. Hoosier Missing Legends is a Quigley Productions podcast. Our theme song was written and recorded by Wet Blanket. The song title is Taxidermy Race Car. As always, stay spooky.